Welcome to IT Security Labs. It has been a while since we, we made a video, so I figured we might as well start where we ended last time. I'm going to be showing us how I'm testing the game of Active Directory lab with Elastic Sim. So this is going to be good for us to learn how, if you're going to be doing pen testing, red team, whatever, you can actually go and see what this data looks like, especially if you are someone who is brand new in cybersecurity. If you're going to be learning about instant response and red teaming, it's really nice and uh, cool to actually see what you're doing. And this lab here will show us how that data looks like and also how these alerts might fire. So I have Sysmon in this environment. I also have Elastic Agents that are sending data and generating alerts if we do funny business. For example, I'm going to show you how to generate this malware prevention alert using the Sysmon sliver. So I installed Sliver on this machine. Sliver is a C2 framework. We might have seen it online. Attackers are using it as an alternative to Cobra Strike. It does a lot of really wonderful things. So I'm, I installed it, I tested it. I was able to actually get a call back and I had a session as you can see here that I finally got rid of. But how does this malware that was generated by Sliver look like when you send it to an Elastic Sim like the one that we deployed last time? Is it going to be caught on the first try? Almost guaranteed, yes. And I'm just going to demonstrate that quickly here so we can see. So we're generating a beacon, MTLS, and we're going to this IP address here. This is actually not a real IP address. It's a testnet2 address for testing. Uh, this is through WireGuard for the lab, generating a beacon for Windows. And when this executes, ideally what we wanted to do is call back so that we can control the machine using our C2 framework. So first, here I'm calling it payload, maybe not a good idea. Let's call it something like patch.exe. Maybe we, I'm deploying a patch, an update, and I'm putting it in my temp folder here because I'll be sharing that folder, this payload folder with my Windows machine so I can easily move my binary. My main goal is to not get caught by how I delivered it. I just want to see if I execute a default installation of a cheese or payload, what does that look like? For a lot of people who've been in cybersecurity, this is something that they've seen hundreds of times. They know exactly what's going to happen here, but I have to see it too, and you have to see it. And I've, we have seen it on this channel before, but it's nice for us to get back to the basics a little bit. So when we generate here, Sliver C2 framework, our command and control server is going to generate our malware pretty much. And the goal for this is to control the machine remotely. So right now it's being saved in my temp folder, our payload. But when things like this happen, Right now, let's just refresh that. This PC, share on Kali. Here's our file called patch. So since this machine is already reporting to our Elastic ma machine, what should happen is when I execute this payload, let me get myself out of the way, it should immediately get caught. And that's almost guaranteed if everything is working. If it doesn't get caught, then we know this lab is botched and we need to fix it. So this is mostly for testing. It's not to prove any point other than this is how I'm testing it. I would like to right click and run as administrator. Couple of things here. When you <laughs> open your payloads like this, explorer.exe is going to show as uh, the parent process because we use Ex Explorer to browse. And I'd like to make it even more dramatic. I'm going to move it to maybe to desktop. And then if Windows Defender was still here, this process here would have triggered a Defender alert down here. I know Defender always catch right away. So the moment we copied this file to disk, uh, an alert here is going to pop up right away, like in a second. But I like to be dramatic and also run it or open it. Then it will be, all right, there we go. Here's an alert at the bottom, Elastic Security Prevented Patch.exe. And then, of course, that happened. So I'm expecting to see Explorer and user interaction in the Elastic log. So if you go to Elastic through this browser, uh, if you refresh here in a little bit, you're going to see that a new alert will show up All right, a little longer. All right, so coming back here, uh, just refreshing in the last hour, you will notice that we even got more than I expected. So we have two types of alerts, the malware prevention alert, 
this is the one that was complaining about us running our file from desktop. So patch.exe was executed by the process executable explorer.exe. So somebody was browsing File Explorer. Uh, this is mounted Trojan Sliver. So they do have indicators that this is Sliver. So we need to find out which parts of Sliver are they detecting as well. And the file name was patch.exe and the location where it was ran by the parent process of explorer.exe. We can take action down here and our options, um, you can edit your existing case. I think there's an isolate host. That's another one. We should try that one next time to see if it actually cuts network connectivity on this host or in respond or investigate on timeline. So if you're into instant response and you wanna go through this process multiple times and see what that might look like, this will be a good um, lab to set up. I'm fascinated by this execution from TS client. This is probably because we executed from File Explorer. So the description says it identifies execution from RDP, shared file mounts. Okay, that's exactly what they, they care about. There is a process event with process patch.exe, parent process explorer by local user on DC, created high alert execution via TS mount. So I wonder if this will still execute if I were just executing Notepad++. That's why I have this lab to see, okay, does it just not like the executable or is there something about the executable? From this rule and the way that it's looking here, they just don't like the fact that you use Windows Remote Desktop to share a file from Kali to Windows, which is very unusual for, for, for some, some people to use RDP file mounts. I think most people have like file shares where they, if they were doing real deployments, they'll do that. So I did something janky that JNK stuff showed up here. So now I know if you do that, maybe it won't be the best OPSEC security uh, thing that you are doing out there. Otherwise, those were the two alerts that we had. I just want to show you that our instance works and also that you can find little nuggets here and there, like what we just found here, where you can learn something in 10 minutes like I did. Otherwise, thank you and I hope to see you in the next video.